Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to start, but sh uh, short announcement before. There is some other show going on upstairs, or basketball training. I'm still not quite sure which one, so you might hear for the first 10 minutes some bouncing from this. But let's not mind about that. Next 
uses for drinking in that way judges this year and no winner was declared but in the ever entertaining family fleeing for their lives in the middle of the night from the drunken in red daddy quick race <laughs> we saw a surprise win by Mauritius <laughs> and in the tradition of pissing in the doorways competition Peter from Finland truly demonstrated his finish in a strength season Is it so that the audience fades? <laughs> These crocodile tears, these irrational fears, where is the morality? This competition is without merit, certainly. So we, the heirs of the lower classes, honoring the message of retarded masses. So let the expert take the floor and tell us more.
preaching about sobriety. <laughs> and all you can think about is how much you are craving for ice cold black ones. <laughs> and this kind of sobriety, it's a weakness. I mean, how spineless does someone have to be if he can even have one drink? Not even a drop. If I was recruiting people, and there were two candidates, one of them a normal social drinker and the other one a teetotaler, without batting an eyelid, I would hire the normal one. But surely it's not a coincidence that alcohol is such a vital part of our lives nowadays. It was not a mistake that our ancestors, they started picking those overripe berries. But just imagine your own life without a shortest break from this daily crime. The whole life just like an empty, dusty desert, without the slightest rest on an oasis of sacred visions and profound experiences, without the touch of hope. It's not life worth living. Human beings, we are made out of memories and feelings, conscious and the subconscious, and from time to time, we need to get in touch with this other self, as you call it. So, how can we, in these shallow times, get in touch with the holy and sick? In our churches? Through political theories? No. Idealism is dead. So what do we have left? How to experience the holy and the sick and the feeling of belonging? Alcohol. And as I told you before, these athletes, they are not doing this only for their own selfish reasons. No, they are doing this for all of us. And very soon, dear members of the audience, every one of us, we will forget for a moment this pointless consumers, the never-ending economic crisis and political debates. Very soon, dear members of the audience, every one of us, we will forget for a moment the whole daily grind. So this competition surely has a really clear and positive message. We will be celebrating in the beaches <laughs> and in the streets. See you there. See you in the streets. We'll be singing. Giving statements loaded with meaning. Where our sorest spots are opened up to be seen. So the Pandey had his speech. He truly opened up his deepest thoughts. And what do we learn of humans? Nothing more! <laughs>
let us pet it, pet it, surely. Pet it, pet it, can you tell me if something I should have done differently or is it something I could uh, do better or, or, or have I just been a, a, a bad father? <laughs> <laughs> you never know, you think you're a good father, but then you're a bad father. Pet it, have I been a shitty father? <laughs> so, because you remember how it was when you were a kid, and we had our issues with your mother, as you remember, and we had this gigantic mortgage. So there was no time to be the father of the year then. Surely every one of you, you understand that you have to do your duties. So there was no time to spend with your family. No. Of course we tried our best. We even bought a summer cottage for these kids. It was bought for you. It was that you would even have something, because for me, I never had anything, not, nothing really, because I'm from a poor family and I've always been working. All the time, working, working. Ever since I was 15 years old, I've never been out of work. Not a single day. When I turned 15, I went to my speaker and asked for work, and since then, not a single day out of work. I've never been even on a sick leave. Well, now with the liver, I had to retire early, but otherwise, not even been on a sick leave. So I have done my part for sure. So nobody can come and tell me that you haven't done your part. I have done my part for sure. I've always worked overtime when needed. Yes. So, Peter, if you're really saying that uh, I'm just a shitty father, then can you please tell them why? No, but explain it. They want to know why. Why you call me a shit father? Um, <laughs> just, uh, just um, tell one mistake. Whatever, mi just one mistake. Whatever. Pardon? <laughs> Your graduation party. Uh, you still want to bring that up? <laughs> Yeah, well, he had his graduation party like years and years ago. And I was nervous, of course, because there were so many people I'm not used to it. There was like family members, relatives, there was people from the village, and uh, Well, I have to admit that I had a few drinks. But so did everybody else. It was a party. Pardon? Your aunt. Well, she didn't have any drinks because she doesn't drink. <laughs> yes, otherwise she would have drunk too. Everybody <laughs> had a few drinks, and uh, then his mother comes along with a new boyfriend of and she just comes flaunting him straight into my face. And, and there was this chocolate cake in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's my biggest mistake. <laughs> but there, uh, is that my biggest mistake? Is it? So that, that's when I lost my fatherhood license. Are you saying so? So now there's nothing more to put a man in the hole and bury him deep. Is that what you're saying? But soon I will be there in the hole. You know I don't have much time left. Then you can what you want and talk what you want. These kind of things you don't go up to everybody. You see these amount of family members. <laughs> this younger generation, there is no respect. It's so different for them. Because I remember when I was young and my father came home from work. Yes, your grandpa, when he came home from work, I remember that I had to hide behind the sofa. I see if I could say hello, sir, or should I run away if he had a hard day at work. And I think that's the way it should be even nowadays. Well, it's a good way, the old way. But now it's so different for these young ones. It's, it's been so easy for them. And it has been so easy for you. you. You have had the PlayStation, the Internet, the Facebook, everything. When I was a kid, I had nothing. I had nothing more than the constant hunger. I remember when we lived in the harbor area. And once a summer, there was a cruise ship that came along to the harbor. All the kids from the village, we had to run down and beg for a few coins that we would buy some sausages from the grill. <coughs> there was a few sausages there and there. Those sausages, I remember them. We had to survive the whole summer. <laughs> well, the whole summer, yes. You don't go spitting hairs with me, son. You don't know what it's to be hungry. I could never wish for a better son. So, proud to be his father. Pete! Pete! Let's get back to training. Take a car and let's get back to training. Okay, Pete! You just need to trust yourself. Yes? Because you know that we are the best in the world when it comes to this thing. Yes? This gift has been handed down from generation to another. From father to son. Because your grandpa, he was in the 50s, he was a county champion. In, in the 70s, it was down to one shot that I got into the Olympic team. And now, but then, you will write our name to the tablets. This is the day I've been waiting for all my... This is the day you have been waiting for all your life, but then, now go there and show them all. Because
because you know that these talents, they don't come from school. You don't learn them from books. But they come from here. They come from hearts. Okay, with him. Okay, okay. With him, with him, with him and speed. With him, with him, speed and down. With him, with him, with him and speed. That's good. Oh, my son. That's my son. My father, my son.
that is lustful, bitter, and violent. The beast that fundamentally believes in its own cause. He can sense fear and he can see through lies. It roars and breaks the silence in the deepest of nights. And you live. And I live within you in the flesh and in the spirit. In the village back lanes and highways I wander and I touch human lives. I make Dr. Jekyll change into Hyde, a lapdog into a bulldog, and a decent family man into a ravenous libertine with a throbbing lust, and a demure housewife into a slutty whore, gaggling and greedy for more. For this is who I am. Living care is better than dead lion. I tell the truth, not lies. The spear, the shield, and the sword I am to you. <laughs> How was last night? Wasn't it nice to go out and have a little party to relax? You woke up with a slight hangover. And you heard this soft voice when the Prince Charming from last night was sitting next to you on your bed. And he was speaking softly on the phone to his wife. It was his wife he was talking to. Some warmth, some feeling of love. But holy God, there's a lump of flesh. Lump of tired flesh. You tell your friend on the phone that I had a wild night. But you cannot admit it to her, and not even to yourself. That you are even more sad. You are even more lonely. You are even more empty inside. And still you carry on the same routine, night after night, year after year. You make my life very easy. I should thank you if I did not despise you. You are so revoltingly childish and disgustingly blue-eyed. You think you can control me. You think you are masters of your own fate. I can do whatever I want to you, and still you worship me, and you suckle at my breast. <coughs> Even though you know what I do to you, you are still thirsty for more. You are thirsty for power that I give you. Power! <laughs> you are thirsty for honesty that you think you find through me. 